Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer. I'm going to walk through a couple of various chemical, uh, sorry, uh, you know, some math problems that show us how to relate time to where a chemical reaction is um, along its progress. So typically people are looking to say, okay, what is my rate of a reaction at some time? Now that's a harder question than we might think. And rate would be described as an instantaneous rate. For this, the only way we're really to get an instantaneous rate on something would be to take and graph concentration divided by time and literally take a tangent line at this point and therefore the slope of the tangent would equal the rate at that very point. So to find rate is kind of difficult. We do however find in initial instantaneous instantaneous rate, we do initial rate quite often. That is the rate equaling the rate law, K and then the concentration of the powers like that. That's the initial rate. But to find an instantaneous rate at some time is very difficult. So we do something more along the lines of trying to relate concentrations versus time. Can we find a concentration at some time? So we have three different formulas given to us that are derived ready for us. The derivation is sort of beyond the scope of this class. So we just give these equations and it becomes just a plug and chug math problem. Here they are. The first one is for zero order reactions. They keep them very simple. We don't do real complicated chemical reactions here. So that's it right there and you can pause the video but I'm going to write it down here. Concentration at time t equals negative kt plus the concentration of the substance at uh, times zero. So we do very simple reactions here, not real complicated ones. So what do we have here? Well, this thing's following a y equals negative m x plus b equation. This is for a straight line. So if I graph this thing, I would have my time here, and I have my concentration of my chemical here. And it would be a straight line if it happens to be a zero order process. So I'm collecting data on a particular at time concentrations and if I plug all this data into this form and graph it I'll get a straight line if it's a zero order process. If it's not a zero order process then it wouldn't be the actual straight line. It would curve. So what do we get from this thing? Well a few things I might mention here is that the slope of this line is in fact the rate. Okay, and the rate's not changing if it's zero, so it's the same rate all the way along. So zero orders don't have changing rates. But it also equals the k value. It's negative, but the value is the k. Okay, first order. Now, it's first order processes. Okay, a little different. Natural log of the concentration at times t equals negative k t plus the natural log of the concentration at times zero. Once again, this is a zero order process. Uh, sorry, a first order process time. It's following a y equals ms b once again. So if we graph this thing, it would actually be the natural log of the concentration times t. So I would have to graph, in this case, the natural log of the concentration times times t. And if we graph these things, and this is for our first order process, if it is in fact first order data coming from our first order, first order process, we would get a straight line. You try and take this data and plug it into that equation, you won't get, you will not get a straight line. You'll get a curved line. So either way, what do we got here? What's the slope represent? Does the slope represent the rate here? And the answer is a no. That's the slope is the natural log of the concentration divided by t. That would not be this. That would not be the rate. The rate is changing concentration versus changing time. That's that one is the only rate. This does, however, equal the k value. All right. What about the second order process? Let's go with a different color here. This kind of looks good. This one's going to be 1 over the concentration at times t equals kt plus 1 over the concentration at times 0. We're kind of reciprocal here, which is why we lost our negative on here and everything's upside down. So if we graph this thing, because it got reciprocal, 1 over the concentration and time, we would start out with a large concentration here which reciprocal makes it small. But as this thing gets smaller and smaller and smaller, we get bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, if you 
then we'd be plotting data, which is one over the concentration versus time. You, you plot this data on the second order data and you graph it, you'll get a straight line. But if you try and plot this data on that graph right there, you will not get a straight line. So if the data agrees with the equation, you get a straight line. This is one way we'll see that we can actually figure out the order of a reaction. And that's coming up in a few moments. But again, these are just plug and chug problems. The T doesn't mean anything here. It's just the concentration at that time. You don't have to actually do anything mathematically with that T. This zero here, you don't have to actually do anything with it. It's just the concentration at time equals zero. So keep that in mind because sometimes that's a question that causes kids issues. All right. So this, this one just highlights the graph and all the information about zero order processes. This is the one that's first. And of course, you can always pause the video and take a look at it. But it's the stuff that we've already discussed. And there's the last one. Finally, let's go ahead and let's look at our, a question. Okay. Now, this question, I'm only going to do one of these. They're all kind of the same. You should try some on your own. I'm just going to show how you plug and chug out one of these. It's just a plug and chug. They give us information. The time for half a substance to react is 726. This is not escaping that half of it is not isn't escaping the fact that it's kind of unique. We call this the half life. This is where one half of something's gone. Either way, 726. Okay, the, st the starting concentration is 0.6 and it took that long for half of it to go away. So I'm going to show you how you run this thing through. I got the natural log. I'm using first order. That's really important here. I gotta know which equation to use. So I'm using the first order equation. Natural log concentration at times t. I'm gonna subtract this guy over. Okay. This is gonna be minus the natural log of the concentration at time zero divided by the time equals my k. And I'm gonna go negative time because I want just my k value. So I'm going to use this first information here to find my k value, and then I'm going to apply that to my second piece. So this is kind of a two-step problem. All right, so nat natural log, this is 0.6. Uh, sorry, this starts at 0.6. That's the original concentration, so this guy is actually 0.3. Do the math on this guy, plug in your calculators, and you're going to get a negative 0.693. That's a pretty common number for halves. Okay, time is negative 726. This gives me a positive k value, which is going to be, plug it in, it's going to be kind of a small number. It's going to be point, negative 0 0.693 divided by 726. And I get 9.5 e to the negative fourth, looks like. Yes, negative fourth. I think that's correct. And this is going to be units. The units, we don't really care about this much about this. This is just my k value. We could figure the units out in different problems. This one's going to be just fine. First order that would be will be one over seconds. So that would be my units. Just not that important right now, but that's the units. Okay, so now I'm going to rerun this thing looking for my concentration at a time. So natural log of the concentration at some time equals negative. Now this is going to be 9.5e to the negative fourth, okay, times my time, which is 1452, 1452, plus the natural log of the original concentration, which is 0.6. This is a plug and chug problem that I'm assuming you can figure out on your own, okay? So this is going to be the natural log of 0.6 equals, now this guy is going to be a negative 0.51 so put this together it also will be negative all right so let's do that guy we'll show you the whole thing negative 9.5 e to the negative fourth times 1452 equals a negative one point negative 1.37 add those together plus a negative 0.51 0.51 is going to give me a negative 1.889, okay, equals the natural log of my concentration times t. So how do I get this guy out? That's the whole, this is the whole reason I'm showing this math. 
So uh, natural log, the inverse function of natural log is the e is the e. Look at your section function, second function of your natural log on your calculator. So e to the power will cancel that out and just make concentration uh, times t. I gotta do that for both of these guys. So second e, second natural log function of the previous answer, I get equals 0 0.1. One, and that's moles per liter. That is my answer. Okay. So I've shown two pretty good parts here, how we use this equation twice. All right, next one says, what is the half-life? How can I solve this problem only half lives All right, so they're saying this thing is going to be 0.6, and a half is just half of it, 0.3. They say this takes 726 seconds. Another half-life is going to go to 0.15. Okay, this is another 726 seconds. So I should be able to easily run a few of these in my mind here. So I got 726 divided by 2 is, hold on a second, 0.6 divided by 2 is 0.3 divided by 2 is 0.15 divided by 2 so one more of these guys is going to take me to 0 .07, 0 0.075. So we want to be able to, just in our head, be able to, or say with some pencil math, be able to solve out some of these things with just general half lights. Don't jump into the math before we have to. Okay, now we have a whole video on just half lights. And I'm not going to go too much farther into this thing other than the fact that I can take, there's a whole formula for it, which is 0 0.693, which is a familiar number, divided by my k value equals my t one half. Okay, important to get really good at this stuff. Watch the half-life video. All right, um, next up here. So it says, how long will it take the previous experiment to get to point 0.1? All right, so now, Go ahead and try this out here. I have the natural log of the concentration at times t equals negative k t, all right, negative natural log of concentration at times t equals negative k t, um, and then plus the natural log of the concentration at times zero. And we're just going to once again solve for that guy. This guy is 0.6. This guy here is what we want to find, the time, and we have the k value, and we have this guy. So I'm going to subtract this over, natural log of the concentration at times t minus natural log of the concentration at times zero, and divide this I out by the negative k, and that's going to give me my time. This is the equation that they quite often give, looks very similar to it, uh, on your laminated sheet. So I'm not going to do the math this guy. This guy is going to point 0.6. This guy is point 0.1. Plug your k in there, and you should be able to solve all for your time. The last thing I'll mention here is graphically, we do use these graphs to determine the orders. I kind of alluded to this earlier. Whenever we're graphing data, we're going to see something where we, this is a very common multiple choice problem. They're going to have a graph of data looking like this. Now I may have time, I'll have concentration, they'll have the natural log of the concentration, and they'll have one over the concentration, and then it's all going to be populated. So in this case, we graph all these things by our, by our different graphs. Okay? So in this case, we graph this data as three different graphs. One of them would be this guy right here. That's the zero order. The natural, one, natural log, this is the second order. And this is the one over. Notice the curve, curve, and the straight line. So the one that's straight identifies the order that it is. This guy is, I don't know why is this for, is the first order one. This is the natural log, one over, this is the second order process. Okay, this thing therefore is first order. What if they don't give you the graphs and just give you the data? They're going to be nice to you in this and have consistent data, consistent time. So one, two, three, four, all consistent at times. We're looking for the one that also is consistent here. 
that means that the difference between them is also the same. And that, of course, if this is the same and this is the same, will give me a straight line. Linear. So look at the data and see which one of these guys is consistent, which ones are, are changing. And that's it. I'm going to stop there for today. I've shown some examples of both the formulas and the graphs.